You are Locked On Cougars. Welcome in to a Tuesday edition of the podcast. Hope you all are doing fantastic out there in Cougar Nation. We have a lot to get to on today's show, but hope your guys' week is off to a fantastic start. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today on the episode, we're going to talk about BYU's defense, particularly the back end of BYU's defense, linebackers, and more importantly, the secondary. How much did we learn about those two units in spring ball? We'll get to that. We're also going to talk about BYU's safety group, which with Ammon Hanneman, one of the unsung stars from the 2021 season, a guy who is very hard to track down, had a f- chance to finally catch up with him. You'll hear an exclusive conversation with him one-on-one as we talk about his emergence last year and what he expects to do this coming fall. And, of course, we will catch you guys up on everything else going on in BYU sports news. BYU baseball and softball both scheduled to play games today. If the weather holds up here locally, we'll get to all of that ahead on today's show. So without further ado, let's have some fun. This is the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 5th, 2022. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On Cougars, resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And once again, a huge thank you for making us here on Locked On Cougars, your first listen of the day. If you guys are seeing me on video for the first time, hey, Welcome to YouTube. This is episode number three on our YouTube channel. We've done a thousand other episodes on our various podcast channels out there. So make sure to hit that follow button or subscribe button here on YouTube. Also enable those notifications right down here, I think in the right corner. Make sure that you guys make get the latest when it comes to this episodes, when they drop. And I trust me, I'm still learning how to work this whole YouTube thing. I got to say, I'm enjoying it much more in the early going than I thought I would. And obviously... I work in a radio format in my day job, but it is a ton of fun to be doing some video stuff. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the product. Please tell your family and friends about it as well. And obviously we are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where of course the motto is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Now, starting off today's show, let's talk a little bit about BYU's defense. This week I've dubbed it Spring Takeaway Week. That is my theme for this week. And yesterday we talked about how I feel like BYU's offense could be legend wait for it dairy yes thank you barney stinson and how i met your mother any of you who've watched that show know exactly what i'm referring to but the bigger question i think is on the opposite side of the football for byu this fall we all saw byu's offense hold more than their own during the 2021 season bigger question for byu is how are they going to hold up on the defensive side of the football in 2022 the start of the 2021 season when byu had guys like keenan peely peyton wilgar atunai samahe uh, caden haas all of their big main studs on defense healthy, the defense more than held its own. The problem was once injuries set in, BYU struggled mightily down the stretch, particularly against the run. Now, I want to talk about the defensive line in particular, and we'll do that on a future episode this week. I'm thinking probably Thursday, so I want to flip back over to offense tomorrow in our spring takeaways, but I wanted to talk about the back end of BYU's defense. That's the linebacking core and the secondary for the Cougars. What did I take away from spring ball for both of those units? I think my overall takeaway is that the secondary for BYU is going to be one of the most experienced that we've ever seen in BYU history. Does that mean that BYU secondary is going to be one of the greatest in BYU history? That does not mean that, but they do have a lot of upperclassmen. They've got guys like D'Angelo Mandel at corner. You also got Isaiah Heron out there on the corner spot. You're bringing in uh, uh, Gabe, Judy Lally, and Caleb Hayes, the guy I forgot to mention, he only uh, went about uh, rewriting the record books nearly last year at cornerback for BYU. At the safety spot, you got Malik Moore, who's back for another season. I thought he was an absolute sensation last year. The bigger question mark will be where who lines up alongside him, and one of the guys who may be lining up alongside him, who I think actually might have the inside track of that, is Ammon Hanneman, and you're going to hear from Ammon here in just a moment. But I think the bigger question for BYU's defense are is the secondary going to live up to the billing that I'm giving it? And that is one of the most experienced secondaries in BYU history with the potential to be a great secondary. And let's be honest, the BYU secondaries of yesteryear, there have been some 
shall we say, lackluster defensive secondaries that BYU has had, but there's also been big opportunities for them to shine, and this season could be just that. And I'm interested to see how they hold up. Now, at the linebacking position, I felt like during spring ball, Ben Bywater really became one of the vocal leaders for this defense. Obviously, he's taking advantage of a vacuum created by both Peyton Wilgar and Keenan Peely not being able to play currently due to off-season surgeries. I actually know surgeries – from injuries that happened during the season, they are still rehabbing from those. They also moved a guy like Pepe Tanuvasa from his rush end spot back to middle linebacker. I think that the linebacking core, the biggest question right now is that, yes, when you have Peyton Wilgar and Keenan Peely, who are both guys who I think are bound for the NFL, when you have both of those guys on the field, you've got to feel pretty confident in your opportunity to be a very good defense because they proved when they're healthy, they are the backbone that makes defense BYU's defense work. Now, we saw when both of them went out, particularly Keenan Peely, early on in the season, the defense suffered mightily. And I hate to say that BYU's defense was so reliant on just one guy, but there's no if, and, or but about it. We heard it from the players and the coaches themselves. They said when Keenan Peely went out, it completely changed how BYU went about their defensive philosophy and how they aligned themselves. Now, should BYU's defense be that reliant upon one player? No, it should not. Honestly, it should not. But I think that the secondary and the linebacking core, the guys who got opportunities this spring to show what they can do, I think they made strides, and they will make strides simply due to the experience factor alone. You're going to have guys who saw a lot of playing time during the 2022 season who are going to be better this season simply due to the fact that they have experienced live action, live speed, all of the different things that go into playing college football. That is going to give BYU BYU an advantage in that regard, but this defense cannot, cannot be so reliant upon one player, namely Keenan Peely, that if he goes out or another guy like a Peyton Wilgar, heaven forbid, gets another injury this season and the defense crumbles once again, man, can you imagine the howling that's going to be happening from BYU fans? It was already pretty bad this past season and there was warranted criticism across the board, the coaching staff, the players, just the over overall tenor of how BYU went about their defense in 2021, it just was not good enough. Not good enough. And I think Kalani Satake, Elisa Tuiaki, if you were to give them true serum, they would admit that BYU's defensive effort in 2021, it started out good, but then it just went off a cliff and it cratered towards the end. And obviously nothing sat right with this team after that loss to UAB in the Independence Bowl. It's been talked about time and time again during this offseason, this uh, spring ball that we've had a chance talk with these players. Ammon Hanneman is going to talk about that very thing here momentarily. The biggest thing is they feel the sting of having a season end on a sour note versus how it ended in 2020. Think about it. The, how the two seasons ended. 2020, BYU went out with a bang, absolutely crushing UCF in that Boca Raton Bowl. But it felt like going into the 2021 Independence Bowl, the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl, I felt like BYU was just limping in there and they were just hoping to get out of Dodge, end the season, and move on. There's a very different tenor to how this team is going about this offseason as compared to the one in 2021 leading up to last season. They came off a high in 2020 and everybody was riding high and feeling really good about themselves. Right now, I think a lot of guys are still smarting after that loss to UAB and they feel like they have a lot to prove once again. And I think that hunger, the, the hunger to bounce back, to go and show what you can do and be better than you were this past season, I think that can carry BYU's defense a long way. The biggest question mark is, will this unit, as I said, be so reliant upon one player, namely Keenan Peely, that if it, an injury happens once again or if he's not ready to go to start the season for BYU, is that going to cause the defense to struggle once again? I sincerely hope not because if that's the case, BYU needs to completely look at how they're going about their defensive alignments. They may need to look at how the coaches are working on things, how they're scheming, all the different things that would go into effect there. And I would hope that Kalani Sitake at that point would have a conversation with Elisa Tuiaki, a long, hard conversation, and say, okay, here is what needs to happen. I'm not saying that needs to happen right now because you give him the benefit of the doubt because Elias Tuiaki, there's one thing I think that is a misnomer about him is that his defenses aren't good. Actually, his defenses grade-wise, metric-wise, for most of the, his run at BYU, actually been fairly decent. Last year, though, it fell off a cliff. If it's off a cliff, if it's still where it's at, at excuse me, if it's still where it was at 
at the end of 2021, going into 2022, we show up against USF on uh, September 3rd, and BYU's defense can't get a stop against the Bulls. Well, that is a pretty damning in, uh, indication that BYU's defense does not have the answers it needs. I am hopeful they show improvement this season, but only time will tell. All right, coming up here in a moment, we'll talk about one of the guys who I thought had a really good season last year, but did not get the due maybe that he was owed for having that breakout season. A guy who's battled back from multiple injuries, but is now set to really, I think, emerge and become one of the sports along that back line of defense, along the safety group for BYU. That's Ammon Hanneman. We're going to talk with him momentarily. But first, let's talk about a good friend of ours in Bilt Bar. Okay, my friends. I told you I was going to bring it out. You see that right there? That is a built bar. This one is the banana bread flavor. And I've told you guys that have listened to the podcast in a regular podcast form that I am a huge fan of these built bars. And I'm telling you, they are the most delicious protein bars that I've ever had. I've had thousands in my life. I've tried a myriad of different companies, brands, whatever it is. I have not found a better one than our friends at Built Bar. I'm not joking. Anybody who knows me knows that I love Built Bars. My wife can attest to it because I've seemingly got stockpiles of them everywhere in my house. It's kind of a bad thing, but at the same time, the good news is they're healthy for you guys. The macros for Built Bars compared to any other candy bar or built or protein bar, they're incomparable. 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein packed into each one of these bars. And obviously, this is a uh, the built bar. This is the banana bread built bar. But if you guys want to try a new one, I don't have the puffs with me right now. I've, I've actually devoured all of them. They have a protein infused uh, marshmallow bar, which is still covered in 100% chocolate, like the built bars. But it's called their protein puffs or the built built puffs. Excuse me. Give them all a shot. I'm telling you, give them a chance. Go to built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15 at built.com for 15% off your order. I'm telling you, folks, they are the best tasting protein bars in the world. So enjoy a Built Bar. Get to built.com. Use that promo code LOCKED15 once again to save yourself 15%. Support BYU football as well with their name, image, and likeness agreement. And do it with our friends at Built Bar. Time now to catch up with Ammon Hanneman, BYU defensive back. Had a great chat with him as spring ball rounded out last week. A guy who I mentioned, I, I felt like what he did last year for BYU was kind of undersold. And obviously, he's part of a rotation at safety for BYU. Malik Moore was the one stalwart for BYU at safety. Guys like Hayden Livingston, Chaz Ayu, Ammon Hanneman, who you're going to hear from here in a moment, they all kind of rotated through all season long. But Ammon Hanneman, I thought, was the most solid of the entire crew. And the hope is that this spring ball, he would be able to solidify his position as one of the lead guys for BYU in that secondary and team up alongside Malik Moore and give BYU the flexibility to play play Chaz Ayu in more of a hybrid role, that Frodo position, the hybrid linebacker. Actually, they were playing him at flash. That's what it was, the flash position, where it's kind of a hybrid linebacker safety spot. If Ammon Hanneman is capable of holding up at safety, it's going to help BYU's defense as a whole because it makes the defense that much stingy. That, that much stingier? Uh, okay, that's probably the wrong English there, but you get what I'm talking about. It's going to make the defense better because this is a guy who has been on the sidelines for a long time, has been learning a lot of football, comes from a very athletic family. Many of you will recall the other Hammond brothers, Jacob and Micah in particular, who played for B. BYU. Well, Ammon's just the latest in a long line of Hanneman family legacies at BYU. So without further ado, let's catch up with BYU defensive back Ammon Hanneman. Last year, I think a lot of people saw you kind of emerge from that safety group and start to really take over. And you've been pretty quiet in your career up to that point. How did it feel to finally just step out and finally start playing a significant portion? Honestly, it felt it felt really good. Um, I battled through a lot of injuries, which you know sucks. It's not never fun, but it was good to find like my first time going out on the field and then getting my first start, getting that all into my belt. Each game, I felt more more comfortable, so it felt really good. I remember talking to Coach Lamb last year, and he said the, the biggest thing he liked about you was your consistency. It seemed like day in and day out, you kind of did the same thing. Is that how you would, I guess, categorize yourself as your calling card? Yeah, I feel like I'm a pretty consistent player. You know, I feel like I, you know, with those two years of inj injury, I got to watch a lot of film, study up the playbook a lot. So I feel like I know it inside and out. So I feel like that helps me a lot. You have brothers that have played here. The yeah. Hanneman name is very familiar here. What does it feel like to be carrying on the family legacy at BYU? <laughs> it's good. Um, you know, I never want to live in my brother's shadow. You know, I want to come out of that, but, you know, it's good. It's always nice to have family. That's, you know, been before you have a little name out there, but 
No, it's good. <laughs> Do you at safety? It seems like an interesting position because Malik Moore last year was consistent at yeah. one spot. But it seemed like it was almost a rotating cast of characters alongside him. Do you hope that you can kind of become that same fixture in the backfield? You know, it's always the hope. You know, that's what we're all of us are working out for. You know, there's a bunch of dogs right now. That position we have George Udo and Talon Alfrey and Micah Harper and Matthew Criddle. You know, all of those guys have had multiple starts throughout their careers. So there's no like specific guys. You know, that's what we're all working towards. You know, that's all you just see how it plays out. Now that spring is officially done, how do you think it went for you personally? I think it went good. You know, I gotta clean up my craft a little bit and you know it's gonna be back on the field after you know, a little two month break from the season, but I feel like it went well. I feel like my footwork's been doing good and my speed's gone up and getting stronger. How different is this defense right now than maybe it was at the end of last year? Honestly, not too much. We're pretty similar. We have a lot of a lot of returning guys. I think the biggest difference is just experience. You know, a lot of guys were last year, a lot of people got their first starts because of injuries. People were going in. We had to go down to our depth. So this year it's just a lot more experience and a lot more competition. Kalani said early on in spring, because there were a lot of people last year that were critical of the defensive performance, particularly against the run. And Kalani yeah. said, keep talking about it. it. It motivates these guys. Yes. Do you feel that? Oh, 100%. You know, that's – it kind of stung us all a little bit. You know, we don't want to have that rep. We want to – feel like all of us are you – know, can defend that. So we are all not – we all weren't – I want to say pleased with that, hearing about that. So, But, yeah, I like hearing, hearing it because it motivates us, you know. That's not how we want to be. That's not how we want to be known as – we were just talking to Kalani. He talked about the fact that the, the end of the season, the bowl game in particular, is stuck with a lot of people. Do you feel the same way? Yes, 100%. You know, it's, it's, but I think it's good. You know, fa- you don't, the best way to learn is through failure. You know, so I think a lot of people, it made them dig deep, you know, hit the weight room more, hit the field more, go do some footwork, and, you know, really work on their craft. Safeties at BYU, you guys kind of play hybrid spots at times. Do you play anything besides just the traditional safety spot? Um. Right now, they're coming at that safety spot. You know, they, I was at the Cinco spot. Is it or that free safety what you're playing right now? Or strong, strong safety. safety. Okay. Yeah. So they kind of move us around a little bit depending on what package we're in. But no, yeah, mostly just that strong safety. What do you like about that? Oh, I don't know. I like being. I like seeing the whole field. You know, that's, yeah. that's what's fun about safety. You get to see everything that's going on, and you get to see the quarterback, and you know, you get to be in every single play. I want to just about, ask you about Malik because he was a guy, like I said, we, he's kind of a fixture back yeah. there last year, but what makes him so effective in his job out in the back end? Oh, Malik, his speed, honestly, his, he's quick. You know, you can see it on the film as you watch it, and his ball skills are really, really good. So that's what really helps him excel. And that's what's nice. You know, it's, it's nice when you're guarding a guy and you know that if the quarterback throws it up, that you're going to have somebody there to come help you out. You know, you don't have him by yourself. <laughs> so it's a lot of, it puts a lot of confidence in the guys. Okay, last thing for me. What now as you go into the summer months, it's obviously in player run practices, yeah. workouts a lot. What do you want to improve on the most? Um honestly everything. You know, okay, you, want, you want to just work a little bit, a little bit of everything. So just want to work on you know, just the little things like Kalani always says. You know, it's not one not one big thing that I want to work on, but just the little things every day. Footwork film, yeah, hands, weight. Exactly. Room. Okay. Exactly. Just get it all together. Awesome. So. Well, thank you so much for some time. Thank you, thank you. There you go, Evan Hanneman, BYU defensive back. Probably should turn off my mute button there. But nonetheless, a great conversation with the defensive back from BYU. Interesting to hear him talk about. He doesn't like uh, being compared to his brothers. Uh, Of course, Jacob and Micah. Jacob only played for BYU football for a short time before starring for BYU baseball and then going on to play uh, pro baseball. Micah was a very, very good player for BYU. But I think Ammon... It's a little edge to him. I like that. I think he wants to emerge as one of the guys who can really be relied upon by BYU this season. And you heard him talk about George Udo, Taylor Alfrey, as well as Michael Harper. In my opinion, if I were to handicap this, Malik Moore has got the free safety spot locked down for BYU. At strong safety, where Ammon Hanneman's competing right now, I would say it's a two-man race, in my opinion. That is going to go between Ammon Hanneman and Micah Harper. Chaz Ayu, if they need him there, he can play that position, but I think they want to play him in that hybrid spot. I also think the same thing with George Udo. I had high hopes for Taylor Alfrey, but who knows what he's going to look like. He is coming off of an AC, not an ACL, an Achilles tear, excuse me, last uh, training camp. So obviously he's got to get himself back into full go, full shape, be fully cleared. But I 
think the safety group, if all of these guys come through, and I think Ammon Hanneman's got a huge opportunity here to really establish himself atop the depth chart and potentially be a day one starter once BYU heads to USF this fall. But we'll see how it all shakes out for him. I think there is a big opportunity staring him in the face, and you can kind of hear it in his voice. He wants to get out there and show what he can do. And I hope that some of that fire, I, you can kind of hear that edge in his voice when I asked him about his brothers. Man. Someone doesn't like his brothers being talked about or at least compared to him. Either. I don't compare myself. There was a little edge to him in that voice. And hopefully you guys could hear that in his voice. I heard it. And obviously I, I was standing there talking to him and I could see the body language. He bristled a little bit talking about it. And it's not a bad thing. Let me be very clear about this. I, I think it's something that he can take advantage of. So thank you to my, uh, Micah Hanneman. Thank you to Ammon Hanneman. Excuse me. Man, he's going to hate me for this, for this podcast. But uh, a big thank you to him all the same for taking some time to join us here on Locked On Cougars. Quick reminder, I meant to do this earlier on. Thank you for making us your first listen to the day. As you guys will notice, I'm wearing a different hat today. And if you don't recognize this logo, it's probably because you need to learn about this company. This is my brother-in-law's company, Atlas Threads. It's a company based out of Idaho. They make awesome hats. This is one of my favorites that, that I have uh, bought from them. Uh, they got shirts, all kinds of stuff. Just check them out. Atlas Threads. A-T-L-A-S-T-H-R-E-A-D-S. That's a non-paid promotion. I just love the hat and figured, you know what? I'm going to give my brother-in-law Wyatt and my sister Emily a little bit of pub for their small business. And hey, I can be bought. If you guys would like to be part of this podcast, I'd love nothing more than for you guys to send over some swag. I'd be happy to rep it on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to advertise with us, please reach out as well. Love nothing more than to hear from you guys and get you on the way to podcasting advertising success. We've had great success with a number of local sponsors. So reach out. LockedOnBYU at gmail.com is the email address if you'd like to get in touch with us about that or reach out on social media. Love to talk to you guys. Locked on Cougars on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Also, so you can reach out to me directly on my own Twitter feed. That is Jacob C. Hatch. Nothing more than to work with you guys here on the podcast. All right, coming up here in a moment, we'll round out today's show with the other news and notes involved in BYU athletics you guys need to know about here on this Tuesday. But first, let's talk about our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and sports information. I'm serious about this, my friends. If you guys would like to get in and have some fun when you're watching these games, if you're like me, you watch way too many games. If you want to put some Skittles, as it were, on it, betonline.net is the source to do that. Find all the latest sports developments, including latest odds on this week's Masters Tournament, the odds for that, podcast, reviews for all the different leagues this season as well. It's all available at BetOnline. They are your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And the best part is it's not limited to just football, golf, basketball. They got everything under the sun when it comes to your sports betting needs available to you guys head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action available to you now that's betonline.net where the game starts all right let's talk some byu sports as you round out this tuesday edition of the show there are two teams in action tonight it's that time of year my friends uh sports are slowing down across the board for byu we're into the firm spring sports now so we're talking men's volleyball is coming towards the end you have byu baseball and byu softball which are really going to dominate the actual live action we are going to have for byu in the coming few months so tonight you're going to have byu at utah in softball uh first pitch in that contest is set for for five o'clock mountain time up there, the Dumkey family softball stadium. I'm assuming with the weather concerns here locally, this game actually could be canceled. Uh, there's expected to be high winds, wintry mix type uh, weather precipitation, that type of stuff. So if this one's shut down, would not surprise me at all. Also, you got BYU baseball. They're headed down south where the weather should be better in theory. They're going to be taking on Dixie State down at Bruce Hurst Field in St. George, Utah. That uh, first pitch is also set for 5 o'clock. That'll be on the BYU Sports Network. Greg Rubel will be on the call for that on BYU Radio 107.9 FM. There will also be a live stream on the WAC Digital Network if you want to check that out. Uh, the baseball and softball programs off to pretty good starts this season. I think the softball program off to a better start than baseball, but baseball is just trying to re in its mojo. When they lost Andrew Pintar earlier on this season, he was an all WCC performer last year as a freshman. They lost him to a shoulder injury early on this season. I don't remember if he actually played all that much 
Uh, he was kind of dealing with this injury, and then it was just determined that he was done for the year. I think it's put a sizable hole in BYU's lineup because he was a very good defender, a great offensive threat for BYU, but now they've got to rebound a little bit. And Dixie State, they're not off to an incredible start themselves. There's a huge opportunity staring BYU in the face to gain some momentum going to St. George to take on the Trailblazers, and hopefully they can pick up a victory down there. They had some wild games against Dixie State last year, if any of you will recall those, if you were watching them. They were in some absolute dogfights with the Trailblazers. And BYU softball, they want to add another quote-unquote power five pelt to their board when they go up to Utah. It's an in-state rivalry against the Utes. I would guess that BYU should walk away with the victory in this one, but you are playing at Utah's home field, and that obviously adds a little bit of a hometown uh, home field flavor to this matchup. We'll see how BYU softball and baseball do in this matchup. Also, women's golf, they are continuing action in the Silverado Showdown today in Eugene, Oregon at the Silverado Country Club and Resort. I did not get a chance to see if there were any scores available from the first round, but they will have second round action action early Tuesday morning, 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I believe it's a shotgun start for this tournament. So there'll be uh, updates throughout the day, hopefully, and hopefully I'll have a score update for you guys on tomorrow's podcast as they go into the third and final round of that tournament. So there you go. You guys are up to speed on everything you guys need to know about on this Tuesday edition of the show. It's a ton of fun to be with you guys every single day talking BYU sports. This new podcast era with, with YouTube, hey, if you're listening to us, as I said, I'm pleading for you guys. Make sure you hit that follow button. And even if you're listening to us on the podcast version, you prefer the audio format, a big help for you, for me personally, would be for you guys to hop on YouTube or hop on your Google account, go to YouTube, subscribe to the Locked On Cougars uh, feed there, subscribe to the show on YouTube. It's similar to what I've requested for many many years about our podcast side of things, hit that follow or subscribe button and make sure to give us all the love you can give us. Well, I'm asking that now for YouTube. We have thousands of you who listen to this show every single day, tens of thousands of you who listen every single month. So if only what a third of you were to subscribe on YouTube, it would make my day. So just do that. Help me out folks. We're, I think we were up to last I checked right before I recorded this podcast, I think we were like 56 subscribers hoping to get to 500 very quickly. So we need to 10 times what we're at right now. If we get there, and I'm going to, I'm going to continue to pub this. I've got some BYU gear. I, I run into gear. I've picked it up over the years, stuff that I have uh, kind of outgrown in a way because I've lost 40 pounds over the last year or so. The number of items that I bought that I do not fit into anymore. I'd be looking to give those away. And guess what? I'm going to incentivize you. Make sure that you follow the show on YouTube, hit that enable notifications button and join us on the video format of this podcast. I'm going to make sure you guys have an opportunity to win some swag, but the way you do that is to get ahead of the curve and make sure you guys are subscribers to Locked On Cougars on YouTube. So there you go. That is going to do it for this Tuesday edition of the show. A huge thank you once again for making us your first listen of the show. First listen of the day. First listen of the show. First listen of the day. Also make sure you guys go check out Locked On NFL Draft Now as your second listen. They are bringing the draft to life every single day with the latest on everything with regards to the NFL Draft. It's coming up late this month, April 28th through the 30th, down there in Las Vegas. If you want to be ahead of the curve on everything you know about the latest in prospects, how trades are affecting draft order, how front offices are approaching this draft, check out the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. It is free and available wherever you get your shows. And that's going to do it for us. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Hope you guys are all doing fantastic. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 5th, 2022.